Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, before I continue, I'll just like to say a happy, happy new month. It's a new month, um, May the 2nd, 2021. Yay! Um, if you're on, I mean, if you this is your first time to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you for just uh, following me and, you know, just uh, using my content, hoping that you're getting a lot of value from it. Um, and also, I'd just like to say, guys, please like and subscribe, share, comment if you can. If you need me to do any um, video or explain any concept in Forex, um, anytime, I, just drop me a line, uh, send a Q&A or a question, and I can do a, uh, a, a, an answer in, you know, just looking at the charts. And probably that would be helpful to you. So that said... I'm now doing my weekly review, but before I do my usual weekly review, I'll do that in a, in a separate video. In this video, what I've been doing this weekend, okay, more specifically yesterday and uh, just a few minutes ago, was actually just looking at the market um, in terms of our week that just passed. Last week, we had a trading, a two-day bonanza. Basically, what that was, was two days of free signals for anybody who is not in my private signals uh, group. A lot of people ask me, Lillian, why do you do signals? Why do you share signals? Why don't you just use your signals to make money? Very valid points, people. Okay, very, very good questions, <laughs> you know? But here's the thing, let me answer it like this. The reason why I, and I've told this to people a thousand times. The reason why I have a private signals channel and the reason why I share Forex signals to the community is because when I was starting out, my initial experience was I actually started, I was learning, but from my first week of getting started to learn, uh, basically I was put in a signals group by one of my mentors and I was actually paying for the service um, I was actually paying for the education um, and that was coming with the service. So technically I was paying for the uh, signal service. And within, in my first month, I was able, first 10 days, let's say first 10 days, I opened an account of $50. I don't recommend anybody to start trading with $50, but that's where I was. Um, I started with $50 just to test things out and it went really well, just taking signals, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So um it was really helpful in the sense that um, it gave me the validation that Forex actually works for some people out there or can work for me if I just put my mind to it. So it also, because we know that this, this industry is not simple. Um, a lot of people come in thinking that they're gonna get rich overnight. I'm here three years in, actually two years in, because I started learning in 2018, 2019, 2020 so about two and some years in and um, it's a journey okay I'm not yet a millionaire in terms of forex <laughs> but and that's the thing like you're not going to get rich overnight however the strides that I've, I made in my first two years of trading were really 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 amazing and that that was because of the support that I received from my day one and that included Forex signals because initially I just wanted to make money fast. I knew I didn't know what to do. So I was like, you know what? If you tell me to buy and tell me to sell and I'm going to make money, why not? So fast forward later on, I realized that there was a group of people um, or other traders I interact with or, or regularly and they'd be like, oh my God, this thing is just not working for me. I keep hitting stop loss. I keep losing money in the market. And I was like, hey, why don't you take over my, you know, uh, join my subscription? My actually, I wasn't, it wasn't subscription then to still a free group. Why don't you join my free signals group? I will share trades, pick any you want, one or two, whichever, make money out of it. If you make money, yes. If you lose, well, that's the market. So that's how I started out. And there was a lot of very good feedback. People are really, really excited. And you know, at some point, some people are like, you know what? Um, because at some point, I actually stopped doing the free signals altogether, just doing signals. And I was just doing my trading on the side. And then some people are coming to me and saying, Lillian, you used to give us signals. Even if you're going to charge us a small fee, um, we are willing to actually just take them. So I said, okay, fine. Why not? Okay. So guys, I do charge for my signals group. 
it's a minimal, it's affordable fee, okay? Minimum uh, basic monthly is about $50 a month, but we have our six month uh, plan, which is $150, which it translates to about $25 a month. And the beautiful thing of taking that is that uh, choosing that plan vis-a-vis -vis the monthly plan is you save 25 bucks every month. It makes a lot of sense and you have six months to just keep growing your account and now have building around your trading plan. And also I share my setup so you can be able to be able to see, okay, this is what Lillian is looking at this week or, or in this fair. And even if a trade goes the other way, you're able to look at, go back and say, okay, fine, this is what she was looking at. It didn't go the way it was supposed to go. And yeah, so my goal is that's not a focus of what I do. The focus of what I do really is education. So I do train people in Forex, um, but I, I just want to support people when it comes to them being able to start making some small money um, with this trading signal. So it's not for everybody, but please just know that I put in a lot of effort in researching those signals. Yes, we may not get everything right every single week or every single day, but I can give you, for example, stats for the last two months. That is March and April because I started charging for my subscription channel in March. And um, we're in the second month. And now we've started third month in May. And the last two months have been phenomenal because our average monthly win rate has been, in, in, in March, we were 85%. And in May, um, considering we really had a dicey week last week, it, it, we, we, we had a success rate of 88%. So really, it's been awesome. And, you know, and, and I just hope to keep on um, giving value in the group, as well as just supporting people who just want to learn as well. Um, in the same. So that aside, that being said, I just want to look at a trade that really uh, sucker punched me last week. <laughs> and this was gold and, and not really because I got the setup wrong. No, actually, I was in the right space in terms of just looking at the market and anticipating the next move that would happen with gold. Um, but the thing is, I got the entry slightly a couple of pips uh, too, la too late or too early um and we we were only able to bag like 10 pips on that trade but usually gold you can bag um like minimum at least 70 pips if you catch the trade the, in, at the right time so that was the first gold trade that just didn't go really well this week um and in a while really i think the last one was probably in march but you know at least We've, we had a good run and then gold just came in and you know just showed us who's boss which is fine it happens the market does its thing but i had to go back and just look and say okay fine and i usually do that every time let's say a trade doesn't go the way i anticipate i always look back you know and just say okay fine what happened and this is something that i can i always encourage traders you know you always have to check your setups you always have to go back and find out okay what went wrong or if a trade really goes well, you go and look at it and say, okay, fine, I really got this right, this happened. And you just make sure that you're kind of on top of your game. And also, like I said, because I support a community of traders um, and I give my signals in my channel, I really have a responsibility to try and share uh, quality signals that actually work. So technically at a minimum, we do very great, okay? But when it comes to the intraday setup, sometimes, you know, because of our entries, um, one or two trades may just end up going a different way. Now with gold, what happened was um, I gave an entry on gold um, around, I'm just, I just want to check, I'm just checking on my group right now, um, my signals group this past week. I gave gold, just a second. I gave a gold trade. It was a there was a buy stop and there was a sell stop. So um just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was actually the last trade I called. Sorry guys, I'm just checking my phone. I'm looking at my signals group. So I'm just looking at it to see when I called gold. Um hmm. So I hope you guys are great. I hope you're looking forward to the week, uh, week rather. So yes, now I gave a gold trade at 1773. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of like um, show you guys exactly what happened. 
So I'll just put this around here. I think it's about there. So let's see, I'll bring the cursor on there. So we are going to assume we can really see. So I gave a gold trade at 1773, okay, which is around the 1773.76. Okay, so about there, okay. And then my stop loss was at 57 pips, which was 1780 around, let's say. 1780.05, so we could just, you know, let's put it around there. Um, and then my TP was about here, okay? It was about 1762, 1762, about 1762, 1762.01, so 1701, so 1762, okay? So that was my setup. Okay, and then, um, but now what I had done was, I was, um, this is what you don't do. So let we hopefully we can learn from this. So I took a fib and I, wait, where are my fibs? Where are my fibs? So I took a fib because this was, you know, what, if you notice gold has just been respecting structure here, okay? So for sure I knew that um, this is, this gold will continue to respect structure, especially when I saw this rejection here. Okay, there was a rejection. And if you know, look back, it was actually a lower swing high vis a vis the previous highs. Okay, so we could have said that, you know, at this point in time when it dropped, I would have wanted to see it break this resistance to actually begin to think, break and retest and you know, to, to be able to say, okay, fine, it's breaking structure. But once I saw this rejection here, okay, we can see a bullish, a bearish engulfing candle. And then the candle next to it, you know, closed uh, bearish. So that was a good setup to just know that uh, price is starting to, to take a dive. Um, but we also saw there was a strong resistance here. So my assum uh, assumption was that um, because of this resistance, I was waiting to see a, a retest and then a continuation to the downside, okay? Um, and I was like, okay, my risk to reward is like, um, let's see what my risk to, just hold on. My risk to reward is, usually I like a, a risk to, a general risk to reward of one, 1. 1.5, okay? I mean, sorry, two is to one, thereabouts. Am I doing? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I got confused. I was like, what? Usually I like a risk to reward of like, I'm using the wrong, the wrong tool. Sorry guys about that. I hadn't noticed. I'm wondering what the is happening. So let's go back. My entry is 1772, right? 1772.66. So you can see thereabouts, you know. Okay, and then my exit was, so my risk to reward, usually I like a risk to reward of 1.5, okay, one is to 1.5 or two is to one, but I put it at about, you know, um, 1762, right? And reason being, I, I, I did anticipate that it would break through, but because of this very strong resistance and it had attempted to to do that and build, I just put my take profit, you know, there. And I'm like, it's more than 1.5 uh, risk to reward. So not bad, right? Um, and then my stop loss, like I said, was at 1780. Okay. Now, what happened was this basically gold, then I took a fib. Okay. I took a fib and I was like, okay, let's see. When gold retraces, usually it retraces all the way to its 50% mark. That's what I've noticed about gold. So, sorry, let me do this again. Yeah, so around there, right? Um, so I knew for sure 
Okay, those are the 0.5 and the 618 level. So I knew that gold, but by the time I was looking at it, gold had moved a bit. So I didn't quite, and I, and I, we, I saw the move beginning to happen after it had kind of broken structure. So let me give you an idea what I mean by breaking structure. Um, hold on, let me put this. So you see what happened there. So, so this happened, right? Now this is a very clear indication that you know um, something is coming. Something is coming. Why? Because gold got to the three eight two on the fib. It got to the 0.5, okay? It retraced, um, failed to you know, break completely to the upside or to break the 382 level, the 38% level, and then broke down back to the downside, okay? So I saw this and I was like, you know what? And initially my entry had been a bit higher. And then I told people in the group, hey guys, I mean, this thing is moving. It might just um, wick us into the trade and then reverse. Okay, so I was like, damn. But then, um, so we we then moved our entry a bit lower. Now, but and I didn't want us to take more than a stop loss of like a sixty pips. So that's where usually is very tricky with gold because it's it's one of those things you trade knowing that its pullbacks can be pretty aggressive. So even if you know, you have to be willing to, you know, to just take the risk. You know, that's what trading is about. You take the risk and you hope that it pans out well. If you've done your analysis, because I did my analysis and I was very confident about the direction. Um, this is a head and shoulders technically. And I was like, this thing, the way it's looking, it has to at least get to the 618. Reject, that was my plan. Reject the 618. Push back up to the 50%. And then, boom drop it like it's hot now so you you get what my take was so my take was this and i like to look at this because it's also a learning lesson for me so this is what i was thinking of the gold will come i mean yes gold will come then it will bounce off this zone and why is it bouncing off this zone because if you if i look left it's been rejecting this zone right so i'm like it's gonna bounce off and and i was looking at this wick here um and and all so we kind of got in early the, the the move was you know quite accurate so my this is my take this is what i was like okay this thing is just gonna draw you know and get to our profit eventually okay which, however you look profit target which which was um 100 pips you know that's 105 pips so i give 100 pips right give or take spread etc etc so let's see what gold did Okay, so you guys can see. Let's see what gold did. Um, so gold being gold, she just decides, hey, I'm going to nick you in and I'm going to smash your TP and call it a day. So guys, do you see what happened? I wasn't too inaccurate in my prediction or assumption that this was the move that was happening. but Another mistake that I made, okay, was ideally I should have gotten in on the retest, okay, on the retest on the 50%. That's, that would have been a pretty, pretty, pretty good entry. So I would have not, instead of putting a buy stop, if I had put a buy limit, whoa, it would be, be awesome. So this particular trade kind of set me back or set us back because we did very well on, on our Thursday, Wednesday run of, of trading. Really, really good. I think we only had two losses or three losses um, of about, let's say, 60 pips or about 60, 67 pips. So it was really, really good. And then now Wednesday, this was a huge loss. Then we took another hit on another pair, uh, uh, two, other, two or three other pairs. So you know, it was not not really a funny and interesting day for a lot of traders. Um, but that's that. This is this is how now I look at my trades again and I'm like, okay, um, we we kind of have learned something, you know. It's it's not like 
we don't know what happened. So break and retest, break and retest. If you guys remember anything, break and retest. So what I mean is break and retest, always. So your entries should be based off a break and retest. Um, so we entered early. That was our, our issue. That was our issue. We kind of got in too early, okay? My assumption would be it would at least get to the past the 786, um, <clears throat> at least 50 pips in. And by the time it's deciding it wants to, you know, but because my in my head, my break and retest was at this level. But in hindsight, when I look at it, I'm like, okay, that wasn't really a break. It didn't really break through the resistance, okay? It just popped its head through and then pushed back up. So now this was the real breakout that, uh, that was happening. And then there was a retest of the previous high and then boom. So that's how we got caught out, 57 pips. I mean, um, a lot of people, I'm sure in the market may have seen this news happened or something, but really guys, I'm more of a technical trader than I am a fundamental trader. I do check the news to just see what's happening, but what I found is the news always respects structure, okay? So, I mean, yes, whether it, whatever happens, whether a, a currency or a pair moves 100, 1,000 pips, news is news. It's temporary. It's not a long lasting Thing, unless it's a major, major, major news, like I guess there's a world war or something and economies are all depressed at the same time or, you know, but generally um, news is short term and then structure, you cannot argue with structure, price action, you cannot argue with price action. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you are in this gold trade like I was and you took a hit, don't worry, these things happen, that's part of trading. Um, but this week, this is a new month. We are going to have a fantastic time in the markets this month. I can guarantee May is usually my favorite time uh, of the year to trade um, just before, you know, people go on their summer holidays and break for summer and everything. And, you know, so it's really, really awesome. So thank you for watching. If you want me to, you know, do any other video, like I said, on any other uh topic to do with you know what i've discussed today or anything else in forex that you need to understand please drop a line in the comment section i'll be able to see it and respond and also if you know anybody who just wants some free value in terms of knowledge in forex um how to look at the markets please invite them to you know subscribe to my channel every sunday i do a weekly analysis and i will put up that video of my weekly analysis for this new week uh in a couple of hours and you guys can just have uh, a take on my opinion of where i think um the different pairs in the market are going to be looking like uh, or moving to this coming week so thank you very much and have a lovely lovely afternoon enjoy your easter um enjoy your may i, I know fourth of sixth of may is uh is is gonna be a holiday i think is it sixth of may or fourth of may fourth of may um, it's going to be a holiday. It's Labor Day here in Kenya was yesterday. and But I know in other parts of the world, it, that is on the 4th of May. So we likely the markets will be pretty slow on Monday tomorrow. So who knows if we'll be trading. I, I'm, I likely will be out of the market until Tuesday. But for now, see you soon. Bye, guys.